Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. We will bless his holy name. I thank God for another day. I thank God for this particular day specifically as we continue to celebrate the Lord and we worship him together in the beauty of his holiness. Um, I know that you guys have already started the fast. I uh, pray that that's going well for you for the next few days. Um, we got 21 days ahead, so uh, stay with it. Amen. Stay with it. Let us uh, read scripture today. We're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse starting with verse 17. For our present troubles are quite small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us an immeasurably great glory that will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see right now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. For the troubles we see will soon be over, but, ju but the joys to come will last forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you and thank you for this day. We thank you that we can see your goodness and see your grace and understand a little bit more about your mercy, what you provide for us as you always make a way out of no way. But Lord, help us to continue to see beyond what we see physically, but begin to see into the spirit realm what you're really doing, what's really going on. No matter what we uh, uh, operate in and what we physically deal with, there's still yet something else going on in the, in the spirit realm, not the natural realm. Lord, that's where you are, and you're blessing us, you're caring for us, you're doing things for us that we don't even know. You already are in our future, Lord, so help us to see into the future, the future that you hold for us. We bless you, Lord, in advance for all things are going to work together for good, and we bless you, Lord, that we can stand right now in our current present and look ahead and know that if you had not already been on our side, where would we be? So if you've been on our side, we know you'll continue to be on our side. Lord, I'm asking for those who are viewing today, for those who are tuning in today, that somebody receive Jesus Christ today for the free pardon of their sins. Lord, all they have to do is say yes. Just say yes, I accept Jesus Christ into my life. I know that is the beginning and you become a babe in Christ. It's the start but where it will take you will blow your mind. I thank God for someone calling the number that's on the screen and they're calling to ask, what do I do to be saved? I'm telling you, it's just receive him today. Just say yes to Jesus Christ and what he did for you on Calvary's cross. I thank you right now, Lord, for all those who are gonna be saved, for those who are gonna be set free today, for those who are gonna be delivered today, and for those who are going to be healed today, help them to hear the word more clearly and more purely on this day. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Now let's tune in together and be blessed.
Hello, Zion family and friends. Thank you for tuning in with us today. I'm so excited about this season and what the Lord is doing. We began our 21 day fast this past Friday, and I pray that you're able to participate with us. And I'm just excited about how God is going to meet you during this period. As I was preparing for the midweek service, I got a call from my cousin, Cynthia Vaughn, who confirmed in just the powerful way what the Lord is saying. And uh, she has a gift of prophecy. I've asked her to come in and share with us. So the next voice that you will hear um, will be that of Cynthia Vaughn. Okay. For I am causing an awakening in the body of Christ, for I am shifting and turning the hearts and minds of my people, for the days of old are gone. I am doing a new thing in the earth, for revival shall surely come, marriages shall surely happen, for I am bringing my people together, for the, for the walls and the barriers of denomination shall come down, for the things to come are so horrific that it will cause my people to join together, to come together. For I am raising up a remnant of people, for they shall do that which is pleasing to me. For I have given them a change, excuse me, a charge. I have put fire in their mouths. For I have put my hand on their bellies and gifts that have, have known, um, and gifts that they have known shall be stirred up to a level that exceeds their imagination. For I have imparted new gifts upon them that have been ordained in heaven and that bear that have been dormant. And what I want to say in, for this part, these are gifts that God has bestowed upon people that they may not even know ex that are there. So we want to make sure that we always stick to what the word of God says. God is just not creating a gift and giving it to people. So in that section, he's basically talking about gifts that have been dormant within people that he's stirring up and they are ordained of him. For the enemy's plan has been thwarted. For I am the Lord your God and I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. I am Alpha and Omega. I have the power to do all things. So shall my spirit move upon the earth and so shall my wind blow upon my people and so shall my oil drench those whom I have called and chosen for many dark days are ahead, but fear not <clears throat> for I am with you. Store up food, store up your necessities for there is coming hardships, famines and diseases, but I shall continue to cover my people Read your word, study who I am and how I move, for this will bring you understanding on how I move. This will bring you understanding on how to prepare, <clears throat> for this is a new time, a new day, a new season, a new era, a new dimension, a new level. For you shall see signs and wonders <clears throat> like never before, miracles, Shall you see healing, deliverance for my people shall be made free. God's people will be made free. I am God. I don't change. I am that I am. I am the one who remains the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Oh, my children, won't you praise me? Won't you worship me? Won't you live for me? I am holy and I am calling you to holiness. Put away those things that so easily beset you. My children, repent and come back before me, for I am your God who brings forth deliverance, for I am doing a quick work in this season. Prepare the time, prepare for the time draws near, and I shall surely come, says the Lord. So there are things that are coming, but at the same time, God is still moving. He's moving mightily within his people and he's, his spirit is sweeping the land. And so God has spoken to me about revival. Revival is here. Revival, God is raising up the remnant. I had a vision when I was praying and I saw the earth 
And when I saw the earth, I saw a gold cross moving toward the earth. And when I looked, I saw that gold cross connect to the earth. And when I looked up, and this is in the spirit, I looked up and I saw crosses all over the earth. And God let me know that he's raising up the remnant. He's raising up people who are going to love him and be pure and who are going to be sincere and who are going to be faithful and who are going to serve the Lord. So get ready because God is going to move like never before. This is the time God's wind is blowing and also fasting and praying. This is a time, this is a month to fast and pray and seek the Lord. And I see God opening up the windows of heaven and blessings just coming down. Prayers that have been prayed and you think he was gonna answer, he is gonna answer, but you have to believe and it has to be according to his will and according to his word. So just know that revival is here. You're gonna see a lot of revivals popping up, social media, um, it could be in some of the regular church buildings, but just get ready for a move of God like we have never seen before. Also, make sure that you pray over your children. God wants to use the kids. He wants to raise them up, but the enemy thinks that he can come and thwart that plan, but it will not prosper. Make sure you cover your, your kids in prayer. And that's it. Thank you. We pray that you will take heed to that word and you will apply it and that uh, you will understand that God is calling us to a season of revival. We have to be careful as Daniel was praying in Daniel 9, that we don't go back to routine, but we begin to pray and fast and confess and magnify God and recognize that this is a time of revival. All right, today we're continuing on with this series of the cross and our base scripture has been in Isaiah 53 and we want to go there once again. In verse 4 it says, surely he has borne our griefs. <clears throat> that phrase, he has borne our griefs, in Hebrew means he has carried our sickness. He has carried our sickness. And I'll say it again while you're writing it down. He has carried our sickness. And the next line, it says, and carried our sorrows. Well, that means in Hebrew, he has endured our pain. He has endured our pain. And once again, he has endured our pain. And then it ties up with this, which makes logical sense. And when you look at it from the standpoint that he has carried our sickness, he has endured our pains. It says, and by his stripes, we are healed by his stripes. And notice the tense there. We are not we might be, or we could be, but we are healed. In other words, it's already done. And when was it done? When was this sealed on the cross of Calvary? Remember Jesus' words, his final words on the cross? He said, it is finished. Those three words in English in Greek is one word, to telestai, to telestai, to telestai, which means, get this definition, to do something perfectly. When Jesus shed his blood on Calvary's cross for us, what he did there was complete. It was perfect. He provided at that very moment everything that you would need from the time you confess him as Lord and Savior of your life until the time that you enter into eternity. He did it perfectly. It was complete. And so 
Jesus then, let's go back through this. He took on, he carried our sickness, he carried our pain, and he did it in himself. He did it completely. And by this, you are healed. You are healed. Now, I know there's something that's in you right now that's rising up that says, eh, I don't know if I believe that. And I get that because within us, as Romans 8 and 7 says, our flesh is hostile against the things of God. Isn't that amazing? When it comes to the things of God, and I have to say it's not only amazing, but it's, it's pretty embarrassing in terms of how we view the word of God and God himself. We can, we can be just so disrespectful at times and question the authority and question the validity of the word of God. And yet, check this out. When you get a lawyer, you don't ask that lawyer for his credentials. You, you don't ask how many times he or she may have had to take the bar or what their score was. And you get in that courtroom, you don't ask the judge for their credentials. You sit there so respectfully. You sit there so quietly. When you get on a plane, you don't ask to see the pilot and you don't ask for his a show of his aviation license. You sit down and you know what? You don't know who's flying that plane. You don't know whether it's the flight attendant or, or the pilot, but you're so calm and peaceful. But when it comes to the word of God, we have this way of questioning and being very arrogant because of the hostile nature that's on the inside. So what I'm gonna ask you to do as we go forward is to quiet your flesh and get to a point, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to believe so that you can appropriate this word. And where the scripture says you are healed, you can live that out. You see, you cannot appropriate what you don't believe. <laughs> but let's get it in our spirits that by what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, he did it. And when he did it, he did it completely. Now, is there any verses in the New Testament that confirms what I'm saying. I'm glad that you asked that question. Let's now go to Matthew 8 and 16. It says, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled, get this, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Ah, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Remember how that was worded in Hebrew? He carried our sickness, he endured our pain. Um, it's it's right there again. So everything that we possibly needed, Jesus provided for us on Calvary's cross. We've got to get that into our system. We've got to get to the point where we believe that. Well, how do we do that, Pastor? I'm with you now. How how can I get there? Well, we have to look at salvation in its full dimension. So I want to talk about that just for a few moments. Remember when you were growing up and you heard things about being saved and salvation. What were you taught? Some of you may say, well, I taught that salvation uh, has to do with being born again. Right. Uh, some of you will say, that it means being saved from the wrath of sin, from the penalty 
of sin. Some of you will talk about uh, the remission of sin, my Pentecostal friends, and being filled with the Holy Ghost. And then how did this salvation come about? Some of you will no doubt quote Romans 10, eight and nine. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you are saved. And in Ephesians 2, eight and nine, by grace are you saved through faith, lest any man should boast. All of those things are right and good and perfect. Can I ask you to come with me to hear from the Holy Spirit who promised to lead us into all truth? The Holy Spirit wants to enlarge our understanding around the principle of being saved and salvation. Let me introduce a Greek word to you right here. Our English word is save. The Greek word is sozo, sozo. Um, and this word sozo has a meaning to save, to rescue, to protect. The act of delivering one, to make one whole, to make one self from Har safe from harm and destruction. So, so. Now, oftentimes when you read in the scriptures in the New Testament, you hear where Jesus healed someone or Jesus made someone well. Well, the translators um, put those words in there but the actual meaning there is sozo. And when we look at that from the standpoint of what Jesus has provided for us in the way of salvation, it really opens it up and helps us to understand the power of the cross in a greater dimension. Let's look at this from scripture now, Mark 5. Mark 5 and 25 is where I want to be. It says, a certain woman had a flow of blood, that is a continual menstrual cycle, for 12 years. And it suffered many things from many physicians. She'd spent all that she had and going from doctor to doctor, but she heard about Jesus and she came amongst the crowd. And Luke says that she came trembling, bowed down before him. Another translation would say she was behind him. But here's here's the piece that I want you to see. For she said, if only. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, knowing that somebody touched him, said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging, thronging around you and he said, who touched me? She identifies herself. Verse 33, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told the whole truth. And get this. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you sozo. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed. Um, another version says, be freed, oida. And that word oida is so powerful. It is to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you've been healed. Sosa has to do 
with being healed. It has to do with being healed of, of your physical body. And that's what salvation brings. It's not just saving us from the penalty of sin and from the wrath of sin, where we can go on to heaven. That's all good. And we have that. But from that cross, Jesus saves us from physical afflictions. Let's go now to Luke, the eighth chapter. Verse 26. So let's set this up here. I see a man that's pacing back and forth. He's wringing his hands. He's scratching his head. He's looking over this embankment into a lake. There's a crowd of people and he's trying to explain to them what's going on. And over in a distance, there's a man who's bowing at the feet of Jesus. And he says, as he's explaining to that uh, to the crowd, that man was demon possessed. That man, that man was demon possessed. That man that he's referring to broke away from an institution that had him bound in chains. He was demon possessed and the demons had driven him into a cemetery, a graveyard. He's homeless. That was his home. He didn't have any clothes. <laughs> Jesus got off of a boat, saw him, saw the demons in him. When those demons in him saw Jesus, they said, Jesus, son of the most high, what do you have to do with us? They begged of him not to torment them. And Jesus had an interview with the demons. Say, who are you? And they responded, my name is Legion because we are many. Don't throw us into the abyss. And there was a herd of swine around. The demons left the man and entered into the swine and violently goes over this embankment into the lake. Now note that the demons drove the man and the demons then drive the swine. And now that man freed from the demons is bowing before Jesus clothed and in his right mind. And the man that's explaining all of this and saying that man, that man was demon possessed and now he's healed. He's sozo. <laughs> he's been delivered from demonic spirits. He's in his right mind. Another example as the Holy Spirit is enlarging for us again, the whole dynamic of salvation. There's a ruler of a synagogue that hears that his daughter is dead. She's passed. Jesus overhears the conversation. I'm now in Luke 8 and 49. Jesus said to him something interesting. Verse 50, do not be afraid, only believe. And I'm talking to somebody in the audience right now that's going through a situation. Do not be afraid, only believe. And he says this, she will be made well. So, so. how? He goes on to say of those who are in the house as he brings in Peter, James and John, they're all the people are all weeping and wailing. He says, don't weep. She's not dead. She's sleeping. And they laugh. They question Jesus. They doubt Jesus. He puts them out. He gets over the bed where the little girl is and he says, 
little girl arrives. This next verse is so important. Then her spirit returned. Then her spirit returned and she arose immediately there in this instance where we see save Sotsa. We see the saving power, resurrecting power there. So thus far, we have seen Sotsa in the form of healing the physical body, delivering from the demonic, and now resurrecting one from the dead. Let me give you one more and then we'll wrap up. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4 and 18. 2 Timothy. Again, this is for somebody in, in the audience today and I, I just feel it down in my spirit for what you're going through. It says, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me. This is the apostle Paul talking. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. Paul has been going through. Many of his followers have been persecuted. They've gone by the wayside. He's left alone. But he says, the Lord is going to preserve me. So in addition to this meaning of Sotsa being healed, being delivered from the demonic, um, being raised from the dead. In salvation, the Lord, as a part of our salvation, the Lord preserves us. And the key, once again, is that I have to believe. I've got to believe that what he did for me <laughs> on Calvary's cross was perfect. It was absolutely complete. So then we can say that salvation is the provision of everything that I will ever need that is supplied through Jesus' sacrifice, through Yahshua's sacrifice on Calvary's cross. Did you get that? Salvation is the provision of everything that I will ever need that came by way of Jesus, Yahshua's sacrifice on Calvary's cross. And I got to believe that. I got to, I got to believe that. Well, help me more, Pastor, and, and how to believe that. Well, let me say it to you this way. Being born again happens instantly. The moment you receive, you, you confess Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in. You're saved. Well, saved, that's born again, being saved is a progressive journey. Remember the song that our loved ones, our ancestors used to sing, walk with me, Lord, while I'm on this tedious journey? Well, being saved is a journey. We're walking, we're exploring, we're discovering as we go along. And as we go along, sometimes we may falter in our faith, but we keep moving, you see. It's like this. I heard someone liken it to the Israelites being in the land of Canaan. Did they conquer Canaan overnight? No, they did it in phases. They did it in stages. And during that time, God was with them. Psalm 78 gives us a picture of that, and it is absolutely phenomenal. 
as you walk with them and you see their steps and you see that God was providing all the way from the time they left Egypt as they journeyed through the Red Sea and as they went through the darkness of the night, God gave them light. When they were hungry, God gave them food. When they were thirsty, God provided for them water from a rock. And I love this. Their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. And yet, and this is the belief part, and yet, verse 19 of chapter 78 in Psalms, it says, yes, they spoke against God. How do they speak against God? Remember that hostile nature that I talked about at the beginning of the message? They spoke against God. Verse 21. Therefore, the Lord heard this and was furious. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came against Israel. Here it is. Because they did not believe in God and did not trust in his salvation, the fullness of his salvation, that he's provided everything that it is absolutely complete. Can I give you just one last final verse? It's from Hebrews 2, verse 3. It says this, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So you're going through situations and you're wondering how you're going to make it out. Well, consider again what God has provided for you. <laughs> Healing. Deliverance. Resurrection power. So you feel like the things around you are dead. God has the power to raise it up. And God has the ability to keep you. Speak to that hostile nature in you and allow the Holy Spirit to bring back to remembrance all the things that you have in God. And each one of these messages, I believe that I've made references to hymns that I learned in my lifetime. And I wanna close with this hymn, Down at the Cross Where My Savior Died. Down where from cleansing, from sin I cried. There to my heart was a blood applied. Glory to his name. Everybody knows that one. Let me reference this one, the third verse. O precious fountain that saves from sin. That say we know that I talked about. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves Sozo. He, <laughs> he delivers me. He keeps me. He has resurrecting power. He heals me. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Just sing that hymn this week. <laughs> and thank God for all that he's provided for us in salvation at the cross. Shalom. The sign of your